Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, February 14th, 2019. Uh, actually special meeting of the uh, Northampton School Committee uh, prior to our regular meeting. This is a meeting at which we will uh, meet with the Student Advisory Committee, in this case the members of the Student Union from Northampton High School. Um, I will begin by asking the clerk to call the roll. Mayor David Nardwitz. Present. Ms. Molly Burnham. Present. Ms. Rebecca Zustansky. Here. Ms. Laura, Laura Fallon. Here. Uh, Ms. Ann Hennessy. Present. Mr. Lonnie Kaufman. Here. Mr. Downey Meyer. Mr. Howard Moore. Here. Ms. Susan Voss. Present. Mr. Ed Zahowski. Present. Your Honor, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. So, um, we have one item on this agenda. So, I wanted to turn it over to our colleagues from the do some technical issues. Okay. Um, working on the technology. <coughs> Is this on? Yeah, that's true. You don't. Have, it does. It'll pick you up. You don't have to move it. It's more for the for the okay. recording. Okay. So could we begin by having you just introduce yourselves and um, you know to to the committee, and then you can begin your presentation. Absolutely. First of all, uh, thank you for having us. Um, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> I'm Jay Ho. I'm a senior uh, and the current president of the Student Union. Uh, I am Kimini. I am a freshman representative on the Student Union. I'm Bryn. I am a junior representative on the Student Union. And I'm Noah. I'm a uh, sophomore and also a representative of the Student Union. Okay. And, uh, okay, so I think we can just get started. Um, so at the beginning of the year, we began the fall session by administering a student feedback form um, to a couple different classes um, in different grades and just seeing, like getting a general sense of what the students in our school were interested on us looking into. Um, and so some issues included in the survey that we sent out were the sex ed curriculum Go Guardian, student feedback forms, and the integrated math curriculum. Um, so after we sent out the survey, we discovered that there were concerns regarding sex ed because students felt that there was inconsistency in the curriculum. So to start off the process of looking into that, we began interviewing each one of the three wellness teachers individually. And after interviewing them, it became clear to us that like the wellness teachers were not on the same page with the information being taught because there's no standardization of the curriculum. So then around January we had a meeting with Mr. Lombardi to try to figure out um, our next steps as a student union and what we could do to fix that. And so we were told that there was a website called Atlas which would list every curriculum followed at NHS and within two weeks, this was in January when we had the meeting, he told us that within two weeks we would be able to access it publicly, everybody. Um, and. So he also told us that he was going to write to the superintendent to see ne next steps that we could take. Um, so in a follow-up email that Mr. Lombardi sent us, we were told that we wouldn't have access to the website until possibly September because it was still being reviewed and processed. Um, so then we checked in with Mr. Derby, who's the head of the wellness department, and he told us that the curriculum had been updated and reviewed two years ago, and it was not currently being under revision. So that just to us suggests that the curriculum is unorganized. Okay, um, so then we sent some emails to other schools from neighboring districts to get a general sense of the sex ed curriculum there and what resources they're using to see what we could maybe do for us. Um, and we're still waiting to hear back from all of them. But we created a survey for the sophomores, juniors, and seniors 
after February break to get better ideas of their views on the sex ed curriculum at NHS. Um, we aren't going to interview the freshmen because the freshmen are the grade that take wellness and so there's no guarantee that everybody has taken it or people might still be in the middle of it and not necessarily have had the sex ed unit. Um, but we're going to do the sophomores, juniors, and seniors because we think that it it's important to get a sense of all the different ages because as you get older you might discover new questions that you have um, and it will give us a sense of changes that could be happening year to year within the career. <coughs> so in the survey that we sent that we are going to send out after February break we asked uh, just like a couple different questions so how helpful <coughs> did you find the sex ed portion of the wellness class um, rate that from lowest to highest um, do you feel like you gained the necessary information you will need, yes or no? Uh, if no, what would you have liked to learn more about? We offer a couple options, um, contraceptive, contraceptive options, anatomy, STDs, STIs, consent, healthy relationships, sexual orientation, and gender identity. Uh, did you find the information covered in the class that was it up to date, yes or no? Did you feel the sex ed curriculum was primarily focused on does that say abstinence? <laughs> yes or no? Um, so then the next question is, do you think that all NHS students get the same level of sex education regarding, regardless of who their wellness teacher is? Yes or no? Um, do you think changes should be made to the sex ed curriculum? Yes or no? How long was your sex ed unit? One to two days, one week, two weeks, or three weeks? Um, and then we're going to have a space for them to write any additional comments or suggestions that they feel would be helpful to us when we're looking into this. So after receiving the survey results, we want to set up a meeting with all of the wellness teachers. So we're going to have Ms. Armstrong, Mr. Mollison, and Mr. Derby, who is the head of the wellness uh, curriculum within NHS. Um, and we want to set that up with uh, Mr. Lombardi to see the, like the next steps that we can take as a student union in implementing these changes. Um, we want to make sure that the information that we are giving to students is up to date, scientifically accurate, and that students are being taught the necessary information regarding consent, contraception, STDs, STIs, anatomy, healthy relationships, sexual orientation, and sexual identity. Uh, we want to be sure that no student is getting robbed of the proper education and that everyone feels comfortable and safe surrounding this topic. So, some statistics that we found. Um, according to the Centers for Disease Control and the Kaiser Family Foundation, approximately 65% of all sexually transmitted infections contracted by Americans this year will occur in people under the age of 24. And 66% of all American high school students have had sex by their senior year. And the Society of Adolescent Health and Medicine has just released an updated evidence report and position paper on this topic, arguing that um, universally accepted documents, as well as the International Human Rights Treaty, quote, provide that all have the right to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas of all kinds, including information about their health. Um, and the society argues that access to sexual health information is a basic human right and is essential to realizing the human right to the highest attainable standard of health. Um, and also Massachusetts is one of 26 states where there is no requirement to teach sex education in public schools and no way of knowing whether the schools that are teaching it are using unbiased medically accurate information. And one of our main concerns is just the fact that even within our own school it's not standardized so not every student's receiving the same knowledge surrounding the topic. Yeah. <coughs> um, oh, I was just going to say, yeah, just to add to that, is that um, also the lengths of the, one of the reasons that was one of the questions on the survey, that the lengths of the sex ed, for example, in the, in the wellness class that I took, um, it was discussed for maybe two days. Um, in some classes, it's discussed for, discussed for a week, a couple weeks, and it's really just, there's no, there's no consistency. Or, as far as we can tell, it doesn't seem, there doesn't seem to be a lot of consistency in, in how it's being taught year to year, class to class, teacher to teacher. Yeah, and we're really interested to see, as a school, how much, like, um, variability there is, because even, yeah, within the student union, which is 16 students, all, like, so many of us have had different yeah, experiences We all with came it. away with, like, different information Very different from it. Very different levels. Yeah, like, my sex ed unit was personally, I think, like, 
two to three weeks, but then Noah's was maybe two to three days, so, yeah. And, like, yeah, so like we've stated, they all use very different resources giving us this information, so we don't, so again, we're not getting the same information from those same resources, and we'd like to figure that out and kind of get a baseline for what resources that we're using. So why is sex ed important? Why will we need it? So sex ed is one of the most important topics for high schoolers to learn about because the information will be needed throughout our whole lives. Um, everyone has everyone has experiences with it. Everyone wants to talk about it. Everyone wants to feel safe talking about it um, in an environment where they won't be judged. And so we also started off the year with the Me Too movement, which shows the lack of understanding and consent um, and shows that we need to emphasize to everyone what consent is. Not, and when we say this, we don't just mean the definition of consent. We mean that we want to have healthy conversations, substantive conversations about consent. We want everyone to feel safe in our school and going on in life, like they can talk about it. Um, so, and people need to be able to take charge of their own sexual health and protect themselves. Uh, without proper education, students might not know how to do this or may not have the confidence to talk about it to anyone. Uh, we want everyone to know that they have the right to say no at any time throughout their lives, whether they've already had a sexual experience or not. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the end for the sex ed curriculum, which is uh, what we were supposed to talk about on the agenda. Um, we do have a lot of time left, and we ha also have prepared a few other uh, issues we've been looking into. So if possible, would you guys like to um, have us present on that, on those other issues that we've been looking into? Um, I mean, we have an agenda that said what we would present. So yeah. Yeah, it was our mistake, and we were hoping to present on more than just the sex ed curriculum, but if that's not possible. Uh, I don't know, Superintendent. Do <coughs> you think the, the posting is clear about sex yeah. ed? And I do you think that a lot of the members would probably like to have some discussion about yeah. what they've seen so far? So we have a chance to, because that is what's on the posted agenda, so we're really not supposed to add items to the agenda that the public wasn't given notice of. Okay, got so, it. But I appreciate it. We'll yep, just have to maybe hold those over to another Cool, sounds great. Thank you. Uh, but we do want to open it up for discussion and questions about the main topic. Yeah. Um, thank you, first off, for that presentation. Do folks have questions or comments or? Ms. Fallon? So I, I actually have, I can fill some time. Um, I love what you guys did and I totally agree that there should be um, some focus on consent in particular um, and that we need to look at our um, what we're teaching our students in the sexual education curriculum however I am going to say in defense of um, of what is being taught in our wellness classes and this is only because we've dealt with this in rules and policy on Monday was um, so a lot of what's taught in wellness is governed by state law and um, so chapter 71 section 1 they actually tell you exactly what's going to be taught in health education um, and it said that it shall include but shall not be limited to consumer health, ecology, community health, body structure and function, safety, nutrition, fitness and body dynamics, dental health, emotional development, safe and healthy relationships with a focus on preventing sexual and domestic violence and training in the administration of first aid including cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Um, and then it says, in connection with physiology and hygiene, instruction as to the effects of alcoholic drinks and of stimulants, including tobacco and narcotics on the human system, as to tuberculosis and its prevention, as to detection and prevention of breast and uterine cancer, and as to fire safety, including instruction in the flammable qualities of certain fabrics, and as to the prevention and treatment of burn injuries, shall be given to all pupils in all schools under public control. So I do have some sympathy for what they're trying to cover in your wellness classes um, because they're mandated by state law to cover that and I think it's unfortunate that they're not mandated by state law to cover consent um, and that there's no mention whatsoever in, in the state law as far as abstinence versus birth control. Um, so 
I don't know. I, I, I have some sympathy, but I wish that that had been reduced to the law. And I think that this law was updated fairly recently. 2016, some of the sections of that law were updated. So uh, that is something I think maybe we want to consider asking at the town hall if any of you are going to that how many, um, Friday. How many, how many days were spent on tuberculosis <laughs> last? I'm just curious. A minute. A minute. <laughs> curious. Yeah, but I do have to say that we've spent maybe, I have wellness this current semester. We have not started the sex ed portion of the wellness curriculum, but we've spent about three weeks talking about nutrition mm -hmm. so far, um, which I think was one of our concerns going into this, that all of the topics that we talk about in the wellness curriculum are very important. We all need to know them, but sex ed is being talked about far less than any of the other things when we think it is just as important as the other things, especially since many students in high school are sexually active, even freshman year. So we'd like to talk about that more with our peers and have them be able to ask the questions that they might not necessarily be able to ask at home or have anyone else in their lives that are as able to answer it. Yeah, and, and the state law is a requires what we're required to teach. It doesn't say we can't teach other topics. Well, that's my point, though, is why isn't that in yeah. the state law? I think yeah. that's the bigger question to be yeah. asking. And exactly. then you guys are hosting your forum tomorrow night. legislators tomorrow. I think that's a perfect question to ask. When they rewrote the law two years ago, three years ago, why wasn't that included? Yeah, yeah definitely. And um, actually, uh, I mean, I don't know if, you, if any of you have heard of the Safe Youth Act, but um, there is uh, a lot of people working right now to push a bill through the legislature that would, I don't know if it would specifically add it to that list, but it would require some higher level of, uh, of uh, sex, ed, um, educa sex education in um, schools. I think going to what you just said, I mean, I think one of the problems is that there's so many things that they are required to teach, right? Like, like you go over so much stuff that I think there's just not really necessarily a, a conscience of like, like I know what, how I felt in my class was that there wasn't really necessarily a conscience of, of how exactly things were being distributed and like how much time was being given to some things. And some things got what I felt like way too much time and then like sex ed and, and um, like drug use and that kind of stuff was like fit into the last week and a half of school, which seemed like kind of really surprising to me. Um, so I think that, I mean, I think that's the thing that, you know, we're kind of just concerned about is that it doesn't seem like there's a lot of uh, consistency or, or necessarily like a certain amount of time that we need to spend on each thing. So I have Miss Voss and then I have Miss Busansky. Um, so thank you. That was really interesting, and um, I'm really happy to see students thinking about what you're learning and telling others in your lives what you think you should be learning. Um, and I, I just hope that you keep keep at it and keep talking to the principal and the teachers and work with them and figure out how to standardize this and get out that information that is so, so important. Um, and, and, and so on one hand, I see that happening in the health class, and I guess another hand I'd say is is there enough space in the health class? You're required, I think, to take one block, which I know there are long classes and only one semester during your entire high school, and maybe if you take it as a first year in high school, by the time you're senior, you might have other questions. And so that's a question I am curious what you feel about. And then the other question, and maybe it's to a broader audience than just the students, throughout Northampton, should we be having a bigger conversation about how we teach sex ed starting way back in um, a long time, I don't know what grade, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, and carry on that theme and have some continuity like we do in other subjects where we share a vocabulary that starts when we're younger and we move through. And I don't know if you found programs that you think look good um, or how we move that forward, but I think what you're doing is a start to that and it will really help students that come after you. Yeah, so, saying, oh, oh, did, um, yeah, so we, they're going to answer. Um, we're mainly right now looking into the high school to get started, but yeah, that is something that we talked about trying to maybe continue it back to the middle school, and then maybe if that succeeds, then the elementary school. Because yeah, I think that it's really important that students are comfortable with the topic from an early age, because I think that just like with anything, is it's easier if you if you started younger, you're going to feel more confident about it when you're older. And to address the second or the first question, um. One of the wellness teachers actually did mention that she really wanted to try, she's been trying for a few years and it hasn't worked out, but she wants to make an elective that juniors and seniors can take. Um, she said juniors and seniors, maybe it would be sophomores, juniors and seniors, but basically just like 
a more mature class that goes into more depth and teaches you more information so you have more time and you can have kind of more adult conversations about it. So that's definitely something we were going to also talk about trying to possibly get because I think that, yeah, that would be really helpful because, yeah, questions definitely do arise as you get older and you might not be thinking about it when you're first semester, freshman year, but maybe when you're a senior, it comes to mind or a sophomore or anything. Yeah, yeah. and definitely adding on to that, there was Mr. Mollison who talked about maybe having a seminar with, um, I, think he, I think he specified juniors and seniors, mm -hmm. um, which again, probably could include sophomores if some were interested. But um, just having like a day or two, like kind of like a sex ed or wellness intensive. Um, so he was definitely looking into the possibility of that. And um, there is a, so there is like a kind of four year wellness curriculum of some sort, um, which I think is because of the state, the state mandate to provide some kind of wellness education every year in high school. But um, it, it becomes kind of like, uh, it, it, it's these field trips usually, which don't really have, I mean like they're outdoors and they're kind of like some kind of like PE-ish activity, um, but they don't really involve anything like that. So maybe, I mean, uh, I don't think we discussed it, but that could be a possibility of trying to integrate like one of those, I think there's like two days a year, and maybe one of those days in a year, instead of going on a field trip, you know, you have some kind of discussion or, or activity around this, so yeah. Ms. Pusansky? Uh, well, I applaud you. I think it's great work that you're doing, and it's really great that you're looking into this um, and working on it. Um, if I'm hearing you correctly, one of the big issues is lack of consistency and how it's being taught from class to class, length of time being spent on the subjects, and then what the curriculum content is as well, right? Are you being taught, or are kids, students at NHS being taught in wellness, really what's cutting edge about birth control, about consent, all of those really important issues that you are going to carry with you for the rest of your lives that we all no, is that so I think it's kind of great to attack that it sounds like while the law does have this long laundry list of what we have to teach it says but not limited to and I think that's a really important phrase and clearly it's part of our curriculum and I think it's I believe it's something that we value in Northampton is teaching this um, these kind of topics so it doesn't seem like we're limited by the law sure I guess maybe it'd be great if it was added to but it seems like the real issue is what you guys are trying to attack I'm curious what the problem is of getting the curriculum downloaded from Atlas or to the the students, or if we could just, uh, Dr. Provost, if you know anything about that, what would they need access to Atlas? Can we somehow download the? You're trying to get access to the curriculum, is that right? Yeah. yeah. So, I think Dr. Cheevers is trying to get into my my line of sight, and she may be able. She can speak more specifically to Atlas, but um, if the committee is willing to recognize her before that, I would just sort of comment on what resonated with me. Um, which is that you discovered inconsistencies from teacher to teacher and that the curriculum was not, um, if there was a curriculum, it was so different in each of the different classes, it was almost as if um, the teachers were doing their own thing, right? Um, you may know we've just finished a lengthy district review process um, where we were looking specifically at um, curriculum and instruction and assessment and one of the themes that came out of our own an assessment of that is that we feel that we have much better consistency in grades K through 8 than we have in the high school so I think in your own way your, your specific interest was sex ed but I think you were tapping into something that we found on sort of a larger um, scale as, as we looked at our own um, practices for the district review so I think in a way it, I'm really I'm thankful that you're, you shared your observations with the committee because in a way um, you're sort of setting me up for some of the things that I'm going to say when it's time for me to present my budget presentation. Um, and with the specifics about Atlas, I can't speak to that, but perhaps Dr. Cheevers can. Dr. Cheevers, would you be willing to answer that question? Sorry. <laughs> Particularly the curriculum director. <laughs> so I'm uh, actually, first of all, would like to say that we do have a program that is K to 8. It is called Second Step. Last year we had a very extensive review process for K to 8. We looked at all of our, uh, how we were teaching sexuality, human relationships, K through 8. We had summer CTL camp 
last summer where we actually rewrote and revised all of our vocabulary lists that we were using for fifth grade. We had extensive and very interesting conversations about how all of that is organized and making sure that we actually addressed many of the issues that you have brought tonight. Um, and it might have been before your time because it is a new curriculum in fifth grade. Teachers worked very hard to create some uh, pieces that were very sensitive to the needs of students and teachers. Um, and also I'm looking at the ninth grade curriculum and it is beautifully written with essential questions, understandings, content, Students will know benefits of risky, uh, excuse me, the um, benefits of, of <laughs> There is an error here. <laughs> risky sexual behaviors, uh, how contraception works, ways to prevent pregnancy and STIs, bacterial versus viral STIs, symptoms and treatment age of consent, requirements of consent. These are all things that you brought up and they're right here. Uh, the physical, social, emotional changes associated with adolescence. The characteristics of healthy relationships. There's so much more to, to this and an extensive vocabulary list. My suggestion is that we do have this and whether or not it's consistently taught from teacher to teacher, I think that's another conversation to have. And, um, and I thank you for bringing that to our, our understanding so we can, we can talk about that. But I do want you to know we have this curriculum and spent very carefully with you. Okay, so now you've got two questions. Uh, it's Burnham and then, and then Mr. Cobb. Um, thanks so much for sort of clarifying some of this. Will you clarify for me, because I know second step, and that's a social emotional mm -hmm. curriculum. How much does it change in middle school? I don't think that that takes on the sexual education. So we have a sexual education component that we actually wrote ourselves. But it's not but it's not second step, just to clarify, well, right? Well, it is second step, but they have some new units in second step, and then we have uh, sort of uh, re revised some of those units, and, and, and they're our own. Um, that involved actually some of the same topics um, at an appropriate level for eighth grade. So second step has sexual education in its the program. Relationship. Not yeah. Relationships. But is it getting into some of the details that they're talking about? Consent and yeah. things of the, yes, it does. Okay. Yes, I'm, yeah. We, we had a lot of discussion about that. Mr. Kaufman. Uh, just a few quick questions. So do we have uh, student membership on the wellness committee? Uh, not at this point. Point. Does that make sense? Um, if we put that together, I believe the wellness committee, the wellness curriculum review committee. Um, um, I'm not so sure that I, I don't think I've put that committee together. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Assign it's a school committee member. <clears throat> I did assign a school committee. But it's, the, but it's not. I guess the yeah, he just assigned. Right. I believe there's a policy that talks about the sub that that committee. I'm not sure if it specifies membership. Yeah, yeah. I don't know it who, does. Yeah. I'll just throw it out there. I don't know who, who is in charge then, but considering it's a priority to students and they seem very knowledgeable, that might be uh, an interesting way to kind of enhance the uh, representation of the committee. Mm -hmm. um, kudos to you guys. It's really a great topic and I, and I, I hear you had other things to talk about, but as you learn about um, policy change and changing practice of any of any type. It takes a while, so I would encourage you to think about whether you want to hit us with a, 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 a list of things that are important or really focus in on this thing. It's a question of impact, but you'll see as you go along. I, I would also just say real quickly that um, there may be other surveys that you guys have done. You're a senior, right? And I'm sure just the senior and the junior, I'm sure you've realized, I'm sure you recognize other surveys that you've done over the years, so I just wonder whether there's some other local um, Northampton High School surveys, whether it's safe, safe and healthy school surveys, other ones that I know you cited um, federal statistics, which were great, but I think we have some more local sort of statistics that would help really inform your knowledge about the, the topic that you're looking at. We have those, right? We do, and they're publicly available, so yeah, those get your great. results if you want to connect with me. Right, and then finally, I would just say on the survey, were you adding, were you going to add any other questions about like demographics? <coughs> Not at first, because I, I would, okay. You, you would probably gain a lot more if you just added a couple of questions like gender and maybe grade level. 
I do think that there might be a, dis uh, a differences that you might find in terms of how those populations respond, and you wouldn't be um, you wouldn't be um, compromising confidentiality for a sample that size. So, don't lose out on that opportunity if you think it would be advantageous. Well, we are planning on differentiating by grade level, so we will yeah. we'll be sorting. We can add that as a question, but we'll be sorting based on right. grade level. Okay. Um, and in response, Jacob was just mentioning that he think that he thought there was a requirement that there be students on the wellness committee. I got it right here. So it's Regulation 105 CMR <laughs> issued by the Department of Public Health, and um, it does say that the committee shall include at a minimum representatives from a wide range of school health and health-related disciplines, including school nurses, school nutrition and physical activity staff, community agencies uh, serving youth, parents, students, and the school committee. So that's where it's confusing because it says serving youth, and then comma parents, students, so I'm assuming that they mean that Certainly. there should be students on it. Um, but do you know what I mean? Because it's the way it says yeah. serving. I don't know if they mean serving, serving. students, serving. parents, yeah. students. So I think that there are supposed to be well, easy enough students, to reach students to, on there. Yeah, to Karen Jarvis Vance. Mm -hmm. Ms. Hennessy. Just quickly, um, thank you so much for what you're saying. I think you have a few issues. Um, I hope some of the consistency things will be addressed. Well, um, I do love, I will say love, our um, state representatives. <laughs> the state to mandate that. Um, I don't want them to tell you, well, us what to teach. So I would worry a little bit about that. I, say, I think that they say we could teach more. So I think that should come from you guys. What do you think, what do you think should be taught? Because consent, for example, is a big topic. And I can't imagine the lawmakers, and again, some of them are wonderful, um, <laughs> you know, craft, I don't want that to be politicized. Mm -hmm. it, and you guys know what you need, and let, let that come organically from our community. And then I bet you, those of us who are old enough to know George Michael, we have this little ditty in our head. And if you don't, <laughs> you should look up George Michael songs, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you want to hum a few bars? Okay. I wanted to circle back on the curriculum issue. So, would you, could they have a copy of the curriculum now? Would you like a copy of the wellness curriculum? Is, can we just have that downloaded and give them a copy, or we cannot? Okay. Sounds like a good start. Okay, Ms. Voss. Okay. I, I, I was going to ask the same question, and maybe I'll just ask it slightly differently. It seems reasonable for any of our classes or topics to provide a list of the um, things that are covered in a class, which is a right. curriculum, and roughly the amount of time spent on it. That seems like a very reasonable request, and I would hope the students could get that soon and not have to wait till September. <coughs> Okay, Ms. Burnham. I'm sorry, I just want to say one last thing. Um, Lonnie, uh, I so respect you asking for the demographics, and I just want to remind all of us that there are more demographics than male and female, too. Just, to, just when we talk about demographics mm -hmm. in our community, we're talking about a lot more. Okay, any other questions or discussion? Um, so that sort of concludes what's on the agenda for this evening. So I think the other items that you want to talk about with us, I think we just need to add them to a future agenda. Um, and uh, But thank you all for being here tonight. We appreciate it. So, okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Um, so, I, so I have a question. Is this all one giant agenda, or were there two separate agendas? There were two separate agendas. There was one that just listed the student. Okay, fine. And then okay. This, this one says with... Yes. Okay, yes. so that was just a... Okay. So then I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn this special meeting. So move. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay.